Okay, question number 11, part A from P1, the new um, international A-level Excel paper from January 2019. Uh, we're asked to draw on diagram one, which is on the next page. Uh, we're asked to sketch the graphs of these two functions, y equals x times 3 minus x, and y equals x times x minus 2 times 5 minus x, showing clearly the coordinates of the points where the curves cross the coordinate axis. So let's just go to the next page. We have the axis there, and I put the questions down here. So now, y equals x times 3 minus x. So y equals x times 3 minus x. Now, this is quadratic. The highest power is going to be x squared. If you expand that, you're going to get 3x minus x squared. Okay? As the x squared term has a negative coefficient, it's going to be opening downwards. You can think of it as a frowny face. Negative from the x squared. You can say the coefficient of x squared is a. So a is negative. Therefore, it's frowny face. Okay? It opens downwards. It crosses the x-axis where, let's just write the word, it crosses the x-axis when y is equal to 0. When y equals 0, you have x times 3 minus x equals 0. So you have either x equals 0 or 3 minus x equals 0, in which case x equals 3. It crosses the y-axis again at the origin when, when x is 0, y is 0. Okay, so it crosses at 0 and at 3. Let me just put the 3 over here. Okay, and it's a frowny face. So it's going to look, it's going to have this kind of shape. It's going to go opening downwards. So it's going to have this type of shape like this. Okay, out here it shouldn't be going back out again. It should be like, oops. Okay, it should be something like this. Trying to be neat about it. So that's y equals x times 3 minus x. Okay? By the way, I shouldn't really, really be writing in this area here. If you do it in the exam, don't write because it says leave blank. Anyway, now, um, that's part one. Okay, you've put the places where it hit the axes, and that's fine. Okay. Then it says y equals x times x minus 2 times 5 minus x. Now, that type of curve. If you expand it, you see you're going to have x times x times minus x. That's going to, you're going to have a negative x cubed. Okay, there's going to be a negative x cubed there somewhere. Plus blah, 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 right? Some other stuff. You don't really need to expand it, but just realize that it's going to be negative x cubed. Now, if it's a positive x cubed, it has this shape. If it's a negative x cubed, it has this shape. Okay, so if there's a positive x cubed, it will have this type of shape plus whatever. If it's a negative x cubed, plus some other stuff, it's going to be going down and then down. Positive x cubed, up and up, negative, down and down. Fall and fall, rise and rise, okay? So we know it's going to definitely have this type of shape, all right? Now we need to find the places where it crosses the x-axis. Again, when y equals 0, when y equals 0, you're going to have x equals 0, so it passes through the origin. And when x equals 2, and when x equals, when 5 minus x is 0, so x equals 5. Okay, so it, pros, it crosses the x and the y axis at 0. Okay, and also it crosses the x axis at 2. So that's like, let's say that's 2, a bit closer to the 3. And also at 5. Okay, so it's like, somewhere, it's just a sketch, you don't have to be that accurate. Okay, so I know for sure that it comes down, goes up and comes down again, all right? So it also, a cubic curve will also uh, kind of curve more steeper than the quadratic curve. So it's gonna go a bit steeper than that, so it's gonna come like this, hit the origin, I'll try and tidy it up a bit, it's gonna turn through two, and then turn again, halfway between two and five, and it's going to fall, and it's going to be quite steep. It's going to be steeper. The fall is going to be steeper, okay, on the cubic than the quadratic. So it will definitely meet it again somewhere down here. 
I'm trying to trying to be as neat as I can. Okay, hopefully that would be acceptable. Try and be as neat as you can. Make it look it shouldn't curve outwards again. Okay, I'm taking a bit of time over this. Okay, so let's just get rid of some of these extra bits hanging out. Okay, as a sketch that should be okay. okay. It's a bit rough in these parts, but I hope you get the idea. So this is y equals, what was it? It was x, x minus 2, 5 minus x. x minus 2 and 5 minus x. So that's part A done. Okay, um, showing clearly the coordinates of the points where it crosses the axis. 0, 2, 5, 3, and that's fine. Okay, if you want to write that as 2, 0, 3, 0, 5, 0, that's fine as well. All right, now, um, part B, I'll answer that on the, next, on the previous page where we've got space underneath. It says, show that the x coordinates of the points of intersection of these two curves that we've drawn are given by the solutions to this equation. Now, when two equations or two functions intersect, they intersect at the points where they're equal to each other. Okay, so if you want to find the points of intersections of two separate functions, you have to what's called solve them simultaneously. Now, when they're both in terms of the same letter y, we're basically using substitution. We can say, okay, we replace, we can say, let's replace this y by x times x minus 2 times 5 minus x. So instead of y equals, I'll write x times x minus 2 times 5 minus x is equal to x times 3 minus x. So I have to show that when I expand this, I get that. Okay, when I uh, simplify and expand, expand this, simplify this, I'll get that. So what I have to do then, obviously, is expand these brackets. So let me expand this first. You're going to have 5 times x. Okay, well, actually, what we could do first. Okay, anyway, let's just, you got m. Um, you're going to have, uh, um, sorry, let's expand this, 5 times x, which is 5x. And you're going to have x times minus x, which is minus x squared. And minus 2 times 5, which is minus 10. And minus 2 times minus x, which is plus 2x. Equals, you have x times 3, which is 3x. And x times minus x, which is minus x squared. Okay. Then I can expand this bracket. I'm going to get... 5x squared minus x cubed, okay, uh, minus 10x and plus 2x squared, okay, so you have 5x squared and you have minus, you have 5x and you have minus x squared minus 10 plus 2x and then you're going to have 5x squared minus x cubed minus 10x plus 2x squared is equal to 3x minus x squared. Let's bring all the terms on one side. Here I've got minus x cubed. I'm going to have plus 6x squared um, plus 2x squared, which is going to be plus 8x squared. Let me just do that in one step. So 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 1 is 8, so you have plus 8x squared. And then you're going to have minus 10x and minus 3x, which is minus 13x. And there's no constant. Okay. So now I can, um, well, I can multiply everything. See, you got here, it's positive. So what I'll do is I'll multiply everything by minus 1. So I'll get x cubed minus 8x squared plus 13x equals 0. And the way they want it, is with the x taken out as a factor. So we're going to take out x as a factor, and you have x squared minus 8x plus 13 equals 0. Okay, so that's part B. Okay, that's the answer to part B. Part A we did on the other page where we drew them. And then it says the point P lies on both curves. Given that P lies in the first quadrant, find using algebra and showing your, your working the exact coordinates of P. All right, so now the point P is, lies on both curves. So the point P is a solution to this equation here. Okay, the point P is a solution to this equation here. 
Okay, so I'm going to just take this equation. I'm going to take this information and put it on the next page. Okay. In fact, I'll take the whole of that sentence. Without the B part, sorry. Okay, there we have it. So, I'm going to take that and put it on the next page. Do I have space on this page? Ah, oh, I've already got it here, sorry. Um, yeah, okay, I already have it here. So let's just move this up here a bit. Okay, so now the point P lies on both curves. Given that P lies in the first quadrant, find using algebra uh, and showing what the exact coordinates of P. Oh, actually, I need that information, so let me just put that paste. Okay, yeah. All right, so now I have this information. Okay, so we're going to use this information for part C. Okay, we know that basically, we know that, that this equation here is, tells us where the two curves intersect. So the point P is a point which lies on the point or on a place where the two curves intersect. So I've got to find the solution to this equation or the solutions to this equation. Okay, now I know one of the solutions is x equals zero. Okay, x equals zero is where they intersect. We can see that from here, but that doesn't lie in the first quadrant. This is the first quadrant here. This is the second quadrant. This is the third quadrant. This is the fourth quadrant. So we're looking for this. This is the this is the point P. The point P somewhere between two and three is where they intersect. Okay, there's another point where they intersect over here, but that's in the fourth quadrant. That's in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so we don't want this. This is not P. This is P. Okay, so what we've got to do is, we know one of the solutions is x equals zero. Now this obviously will have two solutions, x squared. Let me move this out a bit this way. You got x squared and minus eight x plus thirteen equals zero. This will have two solutions. Okay, and it says. Uh, find the exact coordinates of P. Now when you see the word exact, that obviously it means that the answer is going to be in a form which um, has a, you know, a square root that can't be got rid of or a pi. It's going to be an irrational form. Okay, So they want, it, they want the answer not rounded to any decimal places but exact values. Okay? So that obviously tells me that I can't factorize this. And you can obviously see that you can't find two numbers multiplied to give you 13 and add to give you 8 because the only numbers that multiply to give you 13 is 13 and 1, prime number. And you know, 13 and 1, if you add them together, you're going to get 14. So there's no way that this can factorize. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, you can use the formula, you can use completing the square. Okay, now you've got to AS. Completing the square is kind of like the more, you know, kind of mature thing to do, you could say. Okay, you don't have to, but this is fine. So you've got x squared minus 8x. Oops. x squared minus 8x. Let me just get rid of that, sorry. x squared minus 8x is equal to minus 13. So I when I complete the square, I like to get rid of the constant. And when I'm solving by completing the square, get rid of the constant on the other side and then just deal with this side. So completing the square, you're going to write your x. I'm going to write a square bracket. I'm going to put a minus and I'll write half of this coefficient. So half of 8 is 4. Okay, without the x there, because then when I expand this, I'm going to get x squared minus 8x plus 16. Of course, I'm going to take away the 16 because I don't want the plus 16. Okay, so take away the square of this number. And that's equal to minus 13. And you take away the square of this number, it doesn't matter whether this is positive or negative, because when you square that number, it will become positive, and that's the number that we don't want. We only want x squared minus 8x, we don't want the minus 16, so we take away 16, so that bracket, when you expand it, will give us exactly this. Now we can solve, you can say x minus 4 squared, add 16 to both sides, you've got minus 13 plus 16, which is 3, and then we can say x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So x is equal to either 4 plus root 3 or 4 minus root 3. Okay, 4 plus root 3 or 4 minus root 3. Now obviously, p must be the one with the smaller x value than this, this value. So this must be 
4 minus root 3. That's less than 4 plus root 3. This one must be 4 plus root 3 over here. Okay, so we're looking for 4 minus root 3. That's the x value that we're looking for. So the coordinates of P it tells you to find the exact coordinates of P. So we've got to find both coordinates. So we know that the x value of P is 4 minus root 3. How do we find the y coordinate? Well, we know that it satisfies both of these equations. It looks like it's easier to find it using this. So when x is equal to 4 minus root 3, y is equal to 4 minus root 3 times, and you have 3 minus, 3 minus 4, be careful about the sign. You have 3 minus, and then you're going to have 4 minus root 3, so you're going to have 4 minus root 3. And you're going to have, now that's 3 minus 4, which is minus 1. So you're going to have basically minus 1 plus root 3. Okay, now when you expand this, you're going to get 4 times minus 1, which is minus 4, and 4 times root 3, which is plus 4 root 3 and minus root 3 times minus 1 which is plus 1 root 3 and minus root 3 plus root 3 which is minus 3 okay all right so you have minus 4 minus 3 which is minus 7 you have minus 7 okay and you have plus 5 root 3 so you have um, minus 7 plus 5 root 3 and there we have the coordinates of P okay that's the answer and that's part C and that's the end of the question I think is that the whole question A B and C yeah okay so there we have our answers for this question okay really you shouldn't show your working like this you should go to the next page and do it in one column okay so they can mark easier and you shouldn't really go into this space I'm just doing this so I can see the question and show you as I'm working all right but in the real exam you would go to the next page to give you plenty of pages as you realize probably by now and uh, show your work in one column not separate columns okay so that's that question answered